Hello. A question that I hear a lot and have been hearing a lot from practices and doctors, orthodontists, is should I get a 3D printer for my lab and print my own models? As a lab owner, I'm all for it. <laughs> Go for it. I'll even help you. Um, but if I were you, I, I wouldn't. Or I would definitely ask more questions. There's just a lot more to it than just getting a 3D printer. As I explain in my in the clinic that I gave back in 2018, when labs were looking for printers, that the salesmen were weren't quite saying lying to us, but they weren't giving the entire story. Look, the first time that I heard the question, it wasn't a question, it was a statement by a doctor because he wasn't happy about the prices I was charging for the models. And the basic truth of the matter is, is that no matter how much a lab is charging you for the models, they're losing money. Um, they really are. Just the cost to print and the cost to get set it up and everything if we were able to double or triple our prices, we might be breaking even on that. So that's why I was like, I'll come down, I'll help you, I'll, I'll help you buy the right printer, and then you're on your own after that. <laughs> because it was a lot of work. Um, not only did I have to find the right printer, I had to learn it. Then after learning it and learning the mistakes, which Orin is prevalent now because there's a lot more information out there now. You need all of these supporting equipment. So not only do you need the printer, you need the alcohol bath um, and the alcohol set it up uh, because they have to be washed after they're printed. And then you need the post-curing unit. Um, I have an interesting story about that because I went with a tanning bed, which worked fine for the models that I had. So yes, I had a tanning bed in my lab. Um, but then there's other things to consider as, as well after that. One is fumes. Um, they knock me on my butt. And I've been working in labs now for a long, long time. So I'm used to fumes. Uh, the first couple labs that I worked at, there was no ventilation. and I didn't have a problem with that. The fumes from the 3D printing and the alcohol and all that, it really had knocked me on my butt. So you need good ventilation. Something else to consider is the res. Um, what happened to me is that when I first bought the printers, I bought vat printers. So pieces would fall into the vats and I would dip my hand in and grab it out. And there was no problem. Over time, though, I developed a sensitivity. So now, if any resin gets on my fingers, I break out in the hives. And I've heard this from a bunch of people, that now the people dealing with the printers basically has to wear a hazmat suit <laughs> to have anything to do with the printers. So it's just things to consider. Um, there's a lot of different printers out there. If you're thinking about one over the other, I really can't advise you because I've literally heard awesome stories and nightmares about every single printer out there. The one that I loved, um, another person that I know had, and then he actually drug it out onto the firing range and lit up the night sky with it. <laughs> so... That's what happens. You hear, so you can get a good one or you can get a bad one because I don't really think that the tech is really there yet. Um, and then there's the whole question of resins, what type of printer. Um, like when I, like I had a lot of the help because I had uh, 3D printing experts and mechanical engineers that lived up the block from me. And they helped me out with a lot of the stuff. And they explained a lot of the stuff to me, which made my brain hurt. But um, so I had a little bit of a head start. I still like my gypsum printer, but no one else does. So I won't even get into that anymore. But I got a lot more information about this on my website. Um, if you go to the support page, I have the clinic that I gave back in 2019 at the DLAT. It was an hour and a half clinic that I made into a 
that I wrote up. So um, it's something that can be read now. Um, there's a video to the clinic as well, but we weren't quite there yet. And I don't know. I mean, people like the video. I mean, it's gotten a lot of the likes. Um, I have a link to that on my YouTube channel. But it's all about the new orthodontic lab. A lot of the stuff um, is still relevant. A lot of the technology stuff is not relevant anymore because I meant to update it. But it was sort of like computers in the early 2000s. It's like the computer that you bought was obsolete six months afterwards. So a lot of the technical information is obsolete. And I just couldn't keep up with everything. But um, I'm keeping up and I'm keeping my eye on things and stuff like that. So the short answer is, so if, if you're looking at 3D printers uh, for your practice, I'd look into it a little bit more. Um, you can give me a ring. I can talk to you about it. I can explain I can explain it to you more fully. You can read my... Uh, you, you can read my paper on it, my clinic on it, or watch the clinic, 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 and then follow up with any questions that you might have. But I just thought I would share. Uh, so if you have any more questions about really about anything, just, uh, reach, reach out to me. I would be happy to answer as best as I possibly can. Um, I have over... 1.3 million views now on Quora, I think. I don't know. I think I earn like 10 bucks a month from it though. So, eh. um, so have a nice night uh, and think twice about getting a 3D printer for your office. Talk to other doctors that have one and you can come talk to me. Have a good one. Aloha. Oh, a uh, quick word about resins. Be careful look into them. At one point, I was looking into another kind of print printer that offered really cheap resins and because resin can be extremely expensive. And I didn't quite understand what I was reading. So I went to an expert. Um, I went to Al Sablani of Envision Tech and talked to him about it. He explained things to me. Um, there are different grades. Uh, the one that the printer I was looking at that was extremely cheap, it was also extremely hazardous. Um, I mean, uh, it couldn't be around pregnant women. <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, so it's just something else to look into. Like, like I said, there's a lot of things about printing and, and printers and resins and stuff like that. So I just thought I would give that quick little tip. And thanks, Al. <laughs>